And my name's Dan Brown. I'm uh, from Big Brum, uh, and we're a theatre and education company. And I'll give you a bit of a background. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of background on us, um, a little bit of philosophy on why we think working with libraries is important, and then uh, just a project idea to sort of demonstrate the type of work that we might be able to we might be able to do. So. Big Brum, we're a theatre and education company we've been running since 1982, so we're just over 30 years old. Um, we deliver theatre and education work, youth theatre work, underpinned by central artistic policy, working about 80 or so schools, pupil referral units, and also other educational spaces every year. Work primarily in the West Midlands, but we also work nationally and also internationally. Um, our work is overwhelmingly with young people. Uh, our artistic vision, very simply, uh, young people need to know themselves as natural beings, as historical, social, technological, creative and thinking beings. We use theatre and drama to create learning situations that allow young people to explore and explain to themselves the diversity and complexity of humankind. Centred upon their need for justice, they need to ask questions, to find answers, and draw into themselves the richness of human culture. We do this in schools, uh, and it's not normally a space young people get to ask those questions. But through art, we can provide them with an opportunity to really think about their lives and to think about the world. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about culture, and it's important to talk about this because it, 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 it really demonstrates why we think this work is important, why we're committed to working both in schools but also with other organisations such as libraries that bear and contain our culture. Um, in the opinion of our company, we think culture, cultural experience is the most powerful tool human beings have to apprehend reality. It's a scaffolding for understanding, it links concepts and ideas, and to be truly inclusive, education needs to relate to the wider context of culture. We all know young people are natural philosophers. They naturally ask the big questions about life. Um, why am I here? Who am I? Where did I come from? Uh, why have people, are they are? Why is the world the way it is? These are natural questions young people ask from as soon as they arrive at school. Um, An education can't be inclusive, can't be called inclusive, unless it includes young people into that intellectual and cultural life, until they get an opportunity to experience that cultural life. Um, I say museum, but museums and libraries, all organisations that, that bear culture, they, they contain that within them and they get an opportunity for true young people to link into, link into that. Museums, libraries, well, I'm not saying any controversial, you know it, they can't become frozen, they can't become mausoleums of ideas. Um, they've got to live on, they've got to pass a living presence of history, of culture, onto future generations. And, you, you know, you all understand that. And obviously... Arts are one of the ways, just one of the ways, but one of the ways that human sense can be brought to life. That, fundamentally, is why we think this work is important and why we think it's important to work with museums, because that is a way that we can give the young people the cultural experience that they need to understand their reality. Theatre and education. So, very quickly, a little bit about, about the concept of theatre and education. Um, basically, a theatre and education programme, uh, you're probably very familiar, but it has a play and then young, or, or a piece of interactive storytelling, and then young people uh, participate directly in the work. Um, the drama frames the workshop or frames their understanding, and then they work with our actors to. to explore the drama, to explore the action, to explore the narrative. Um, we try to engage them in a purposeful task within that narrative because that's how real learning takes place. 
And what they're able to do is manipulate the real world in a fiction to explore the real world and to explore their place in the world in a safe narrative space, a safe imaginative dramatic space. Um, and it, within that space, they can make real leaps in cognition and real leaps in learning. Now we normally we deliver uh, we normally deliver a couple of theatre and education programs a year, and we work across the the age range and across the uh, the school's context. Um, and at the most simple level, we can take that work into a library context, and and, and we do. We've tended to work with Birmingham Library Services, certainly on the book bash uh, year on year, bringing our theatre and education program into a space and. Um, and, and delivering that to a, a device section of young people taken from a community. But for this, I thought for this presentation, I, get, I wouldn't just talk about our normal theatre and education programme, because you can come and talk to us any time about that. I thought I'd talk about something a bit more bespoke, a bit more in depth. Um, and this is actually a project we did with, uh, with Avoncroft Museum, but it's... Um, but it's, I think it's a project repl replicable anywhere where we could, we could take over a space or work with you in a space, in a specific site. Um, and the project was called <coughs> Evacuees. Now, I'm going back a long time for this. It's all the way back in 2003. And it's a bit, <laughs> it's, in a way, it's a bit, a bit sad that we have to go so far back to show. But I think that that's what demonstrates the, the, the use of an event like today, when we can sort of reconnect uh, and, and, and hopefully develop some, some new work in future. So, conceptually, very simple. It was a site-specific project where we made young people evacuees. We bust them out to somewhere in the country to give them that experience of, of being evacuated, just as the young people, just as their grandparents were uh, 60 or so years, years back. We wanted to give the young people the opportunity to explore the concepts of being displaced and dislocated. We wanted to explore their own sense of displacement and dislocation, because all young people feel that way sometimes. We wanted to encourage them to play through a role, to give an understanding of what it was like to be an evacuee, but also to give them a unique experience to visit a site and place themselves in it, place their imagination into a specific place. Now, the we could have given, a, a, you know, just them an experience of experiential drama, just having them walk around bumping into people and roll. But really, that, that wouldn't be quite good enough. That wouldn't be quite good enough. Well, that's a fairly limited form of delivery. So we needed to have a specific purpose, a task through which the young people could explore the universal. So we created a girl for them, a young girl. We created Ruby Barker. And we presented Ruby's story to them before we even took them onto the site. She was 11 years old. She had to leave Birmingham. She had to be evacuated. We showed them a box, and it had all the things Ruby took with her, things she cared about, things to, she had to take. Um, they be began to explore the objects, began to explore the narrative of her life. They began to build up a picture in their minds of who she was. Um, this is a very long slide, sorry, I'll, we'll make it available later on. Fundamentally, on the day of the, on the, day of the, uh, of, of the programme itself, the young people, we got them all together, we gave them their, uh, their jam sandwiches, their new identity cards, nothing apart from jam, you didn't get that in the war. Um, we, we gave them, uh, we drilled them on, um, on, on uh, evacuation techniques and uh, on, on um, 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 bomb drills. Um, taught them do's and don'ts. Dig for Victory, wartime songs. It was all very essential to create a sense of disbelief, really, to enable the young people to forget about their own lives and begin to place themselves into the site that they were about to meet. It was a very fundamental part of the whole experience. Um, now, when they, got to the, when they got to the Avoncroft, we sort of took them through various places, took them through various little experiences. They, they had glimpsed a number of incidents of village, village life. Um, and then they arrived into the hall from where they were to be billeted, and they met the teacher, Mrs. Willis. And Mrs. Willis was deeply troubled, uh, and she held up a letter from the mother of a young girl who had been staying there, Ruby Barker. And at that point, everything changed for the young people. There was a qualitative difference to their experience, because at that point, they were being engaged into a narrative. They remember Ruby, they knew who she was, they had a, an engagement into the situation now. Ruby had tragically died in an accident. 
She'd fallen through the ice walking on the village pond. Happened one night, late, nobody saw her. Her mother had written a letter asking how she'd been in those last few days, those last few weeks. She begged to know about what the life of her lost child was like. Mrs. Willis asked the new arrival of the children, you understand what it is like to leave behind all that is familiar. I want you to find out about her life and write that letter to her mother. So at that point, the children have a, have a link, a real meaningful link into the situation. They can really now put their imagination into that situation. So they began to explore this place. And obviously, it had been set up by our company. Our active teachers were taking on these roles. Um, the windmill, Mr O'Grady, the, the miller, the dovecote where she used to listen to, to the birds, the old barn where she would meet her friends, the closet where she was sent for bed wetting, the police station where she visited. We created all these things, the farmer's rife, the chain maker, we created all these people, an environment for them to begin to explore. Because they were exploring a narrative, they had an emotional engagement in that, and real understand, real interest in being to unpick what was happening um, and unpick what was going on in this situation. What we were doing is we were creating a site of drama, creating a place where their, their imagination could be freed to explore the world. Because it was imaginative, it was always safe for them. It was always safe for them. But this place that held this culture, held this cultural context, it was grounding that in real living history. It wasn't theoretical. They were making a link to the history of their, of their society. Um, when we finished, we got the young people and we shared back their findings. We narrated her journey, those last fatal steps across the ice. They were able to encode their own understandings of what life was like for her. And in doing so, they were able to speak about their own sense of displacement, and it's their own sense of dislocation. I'm going to give you a, 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 a letter, actually, one of the, one of the children wrote, uh, and it was a letter she wrote to the, uh, to the child's mother. Uh, and if we asked for a piece of writing because, I guess, because it's a very, it, it, it's a very effective way of capturing young people's thought or young people, people's experience in the moment. Um, and this is, this is the letter to Ruby's mother, and this was written by an 11-year-old girl, I believe. Um, Ruby felt like she wanted to die. She missed her parents so much. She wanted to be a normal child. She tried to make things better for her doll, to make her own special place where she could feel special. But evacuated, Ruby herself felt abandoned. It was as if the pain in her heart would split her in two. She was breaking down like a nervous breakdown. But then she danced and pictured her mum dancing with her, smiling and laughing. For Ruby, some lessons appeared as punishments. Punishments didn't help her. She tried to take her mind off her problems by remembering her mum when she was alone, in the dark, with the smell of the pillow. She never forgot the smell of love. She held it in her arms. Now, I think that's a rather beautiful piece of writing. And it's a very powerful piece of writing from an 11 year old. And that is a type of high quality, high level interaction we think we can get from drama, from placing an imaginative response into a place that holds, holds our culture. On a more cynical note, quite simply, I think any teacher could see the value, any educator can see the value of of, the, of encouraging young people to think it this way and to think in this, uh, at this level. And I guess our constant argument with schools and constant argument with educators is that, that young people need a space to think imaginatively and to think like this so that they can develop their ability to communicate, ability to think, ability to, 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 to explore their own humanity. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to finish by returning to a little bit of philosophy uh, and just talk about imagination, just very quickly. Um, 
And there's the meal from, from the evacuees. So, uh, I'm going to quote from uh, a, a, a writer we use in some of our work, Kieran Egan. Uh, to be imaginative is not to have a particular function highly developed, but to have a heightened capacity in all mental functions. It is not, in particular, something distinct from reason, but rather it is what gives reason flexibility, energy and vividness. We imagine ideas all the time that can't be expressed or represented in any other form, like Einstein's physics. Um, we also imagine not wanting to live like that, or how you'd feel if that happened to you, or about feeling important. We imagine compassion. Um, imagination defines our humanity. By bringing the imagination into an environment that has real, meaningful, historical relationship to our society and holds and contains our culture, young people's learning can undergo transformative, life-changing experiences. And that is why we're committed to working with libraries. Because they, you hold within you the culture. We would like to go and work with you to help that bring to life because we know what impact that can have on young people's learning. And there we go, I finished. <laughs> Thank you very much.